The Al Arabia Network reported Tuesday that Hezbollah's leadership is considering the possibility of taking control of Beirut and effectively carrying out a military coup in Lebanon should the current Syrian regime fall. According to the report, Hezbollah members have expressed concerns over the escalation of the civil uprising in Syria, which could lead to the fall of Bashar Assad's regime. The Syrian president is an ally of the Lebanese Shiite group. Sources close to Hezbollah noted that it was due to those concerns that the Hezbollah leadership was examining various scenarios, including a broad maneuver on the ground, similar to the takeover of Beirut in May 2008. However, the current plans apparently include a much more extensive maneuver, which may expand to a military coup. One of the sources told Al Arabia that as soon as Hezbollah will sense that the collapse of Assad's regime is imminent, armed cells will quickly begin operating to seize control of Beirut's eastern and western parts. This operation, which will be coordinated with Hezbollah's allies, including Mi- Michel Ayoun's Free Patriotic Movement, will be carried out under the banner of protecting the resistance and its weapons inside Lebanon. The U.S. Treasury announced late Monday night that it has imposed sanctions on 11 entities and individuals under an existing executive order for their alleged assistance to Iran's nuclear program, including its enrichment and heavy water programs. Their assets were frozen, and any U.S. person is banned from doing business with them. Treasury Secretary Timothy Geithner issued a warning that any firms doing business with Iran's banking sector could run the risk of funding illicit activities. The U.S. government named Iran as a primary money laundering concern, but stopped short of adopting fully blown sanctions against Iran's central bank that could strain ties with European and Asian allies. Russia on Tuesday dismissed the new Western sanctions targeting Iran's financial and energy sectors as unacceptable, warning that such measures would hurt the chances of renewing talks with Tehran over its nuclear program. Foreign Ministry spokesman Alexander Lukashevich said in a statement, we again underline that the Russian Federation considers such extra territorial measures unacceptable and contradictory to international law. Iran's foreign ministry also condemned the new measures as a show of hostility of these countries towards Iran. Major General Orna Barbivai, head of the IDF Personal Directoriate, said on Tuesday that women should sing on any stage and in any and every ceremony. Speaking at a subcommittee at the Knesset's Foreign Affairs and Defense Committee, Barbara Vai explained that her stance stemmed from a respectable and equal perception. The first woman to be made a major general, the Israeli Army's second highest rank, has been appointed to head a committee tasked with examining all aspects of joint service. Earlier this week, IDF Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Benny Gans expressed his discontent over comments made by Samaria Chief Rabbi Eliakim Levanon against forcing religious soldiers to attend official ceremonies which include the performance of women. Levanon, head of the Elon Moreh Hezder Yeshiva, had slammed the expected recommendation of a committee appointed by Gans and said rabbis would instruct their students not to enlist into the army service. The women's singing row began several months ago when religious cadets were dismissed from an officer's course after walking out from a ceremony as female soldiers began singing. Ellie Hurwitz, the former CEO of pharmaceutical giant Teva, died of cancer Monday night at the age of 89. He was survived by his wife Dahlia, three children, and nine grandchildren. He was hospitalized in serious condition at the Sheba Medical Center in Tel Shomer last week. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu released a statement mourning Hurwitz as one of the greatest Israeli industrialists. Hurwitz, born in Jerusalem, stepped down from the helm at Teva when he was 70 years old and became the chairman of the company's board. In the 1980s, he headed the Manufacturer Association of Israel and for a while chaired the board of directors at Bank Lumi. In 1976, Hurwitz was appointed CEO of Teva and in the same year won the industry's award for his achievements in chemistry. In 2001, he received the Israel Prize for Lifetime Achievements. 
BASIC International announced Sunday that it will install cloud model biometric location transmitters in every Israeli elementary school. The company refused to reveal the cost of the deal, but emphasized that it was a significant tender totaling tens of millions of shekels. The biometric location transmitters will be installed as part of the New Horizon program, whose purpose is to produce computerized statistical reports for the use of school principals and education ministry administrators at any point in time using real-time figures. The statistics that will be gathered will be reported to the Education Ministry payroll system. Bezik International Education Supervisor Kobe Ben Raphael explains that the Education Ministry has been pushing for location transmitters in order to pay teachers for the actual amount of hours spent working. Once the system is installed, more than 160,000 teachers and 4,500 schools will be required to report using the system. The system was installed in a few hundred schools in the last two months and the entire installation project will be completed within a year and a half. This week, the inaugural Tel Aviv Fashion Week kicked off, where an appearance from designer Roberta Cavalli has boosted its chances of getting on the international fashion map. Cavalli was feted during his Sunday night arrival at a cocktail party for he and his wife, Ava, at the Ramat Gan home of the Italian ambassador. As with any Hollywood party, it was filled with a mix of luxury retailers, social fashionistas, photographers, and reporters, including a flock of international journalists from the U.S., Britain, Mexico, Russia, and Japan.